In this video, I'm going to cover position error. And if you watch my other videos about the GDNT symbols, I told you that I would cover uh, position error in its own video because I wanted to, to really go in depth on how to understand the tolerance zone and demonstrate a tool I've developed that will help me explain it better and help you uh, calculate it better. So if you go to the Pragmatic Metrology website, you'll, you should find a, a GDNT position calculator. You can download and, and follow along with me as I demonstrate it. You will need a version of Microsoft Excel 2010 or later. Uh, I realize that not everybody has access to that, but it is fairly common and it's a tool I'm very familiar with and it's, it's easy to distribute this way. So uh, if you can, pause the video, download that and, and follow along with me. Otherwise, um, we're going we're gonna to jump into it. Uh, as I mentioned in the other videos, when, it, you know, when a GD&T came up as a position error, it's not so much this um, doesn't come down to how you measure it. How you measure it, whether it's with a height gauge, caliper, uh, whatever you want to use, uh, it's the same. There's nothing really new for me to show you. I will demonstrate um, a quick measurement in this video, but uh, the position error itself is more understanding the tolerance zone than it is setting up a special fixture for it, like we did with the other symbols, straightness, concentricity. Uh, those take some understanding of the symbols the datums and, and how to set up. For position error, you still have to find the center point of a hole, just like whether position is called out or not, and, and how you choose that is up to you. But let's talk about the tolerance. So um, in, in position error, the rectangular, you know, plus or minus X, plus or minus Y is replaced with a circle. And so I have that uh, demonstrated or uh, displayed here, you used to have this traditional minus x plus x minus y plus y box that your center point in purple here needed to fall into. And what position error does, you know, what it's designed to do is it's designed, as I mentioned, it's GD and T symbols are functional symbols. They provide information about how the part functions, particularly involving assemblies. And position is one where particularly you'll have round shafts into round holes for rotations or press fits. You also have bolts going into holes. So all these objects are round because they're so common, they, they're using this symbol most of the time. But in fact, position can be applied to, to uh, features that are not circles, that are not diameters. For this video, we're really gonna focus on that, but it can apply um, to other, other shapes like in camshafts and you have ellipses or hexagonal drivers, square drivers. Um, you could position slots this way. So um, there are other applications for it. We're really gonna focus on holes. That's the most common application and, and, and it'll help you understand it if we just stick to one symbol for now or uh, one feature for now. So um, as I mentioned before, the measurement requires finding the size and the center of a hole. That's no different. Uh, metrology is the same, um, but your tolerance zone has changed shape, uh, which is good uh, most of the time. You will need to watch the other video about GDNT where I you know, really went into depth on datums because what the feature control frame looks like is it'll have the position symbol, then your tolerance. Um, it will always have, or it should always have the diameter symbol here. We'll talk about why that's important, but um, Suffice to say, this position tolerance of 14 thousandths, it defines that the diameter of your zone is 14 thousandths, not the radius. So it always applies in diameter form, whether this symbol's here or not, but it's usually there to clarify. Sometimes there are applications where people think it might be the radius and not the diameter, which is, which is wrong. So it's always the diameter of the tolerance zone. And then you have your datum surfaces B and C. So that one might be in relation to the angle block here, datum B is the bottom, datum C is the back face. And we're talking about the position of the holes, whatever holes are called out relative to those two datums. So basically what happens, you know, to go in more depth on this diagram here, um, you have your new circular tolerance zone and your rectangular tolerance zone that you used to have 
actually you never um, it's for reference only when as I mentioned in the other video when you when the position symbol applies your title block tolerance goes away um, it's meaningless you shouldn't I mean just change it over to to the circular zone um, if you know position has a good uses and bad uses but as a, for the functional use of assembling holes hopefully they've picked a circle that matches your um, traditional tolerance zone so for example let's let's walk through this one um, if you take a look at the at the print for the angle block which I don't have with me here but um, uh, we have a zoomed in here the title block tolerance says you know plus or minus five thousandths for anything that's a three decimal place so when you're talking about plus or minus five thousandths that would represent your your old box there's plus five and x minus five and x minus five and y plus five so you have a 10 by 10 square and if you do the triangle math you know with a uh, 10 by 10 square your uh, corner distance ends up being 0.707 the square root of 2 and so when you double that to create the diameter you end up with 14 so a lot of times in manufacturing they'll pick a number that matches this corner uh, or this radius for you know as I said it's not a radius but they'll pick the number that creates the diameter circle that lands on your four corners pretty much exactly. It's actually 0 0.0141 and some change, but so they'll round it a little bit. But they won't pick a bigger number or they won't pick a smaller number most of the time. Most of the time they're gonna wanna give you this extra bonus um, so that you're, you have a little bit of extra room uh, to clear things. Um, and you know, I'll say right now, um, to clarify, we're talking about the center point of the hole and or the shaft whichever but um, this diagram is showing you the center point it's not showing you the surface or the actual diameter which would be way off on the outside creating a circle around it so we're, we're really zoomed in on just the center we can't see the the surface anymore or we can't see the surface from here and so the reason we do this it gives you a bonus, if you're not a bonus, but um, it gives you extra room. And it's actually about 57% more surface area. If you consider the extra pieces that this circle gives you, it gives you about 50, about 57% of the square that's there extra, which is great. You always want more tolerance, right? When you're trying to design something to, with the least cost and the highest quality, well, if your parts are easier to assemble with really no change, no major changes to the design, just changing the tolerance. Um, this is a great thing. So um, let's take a look at an example and then I'll, I'll switch over to the calculator. So let's, let's, let's look at our print. I have this zoomed in on the, on the true position symbol here. So true position symbol 14, there's an M here. Um, this circular M means maximum material condition bonus tolerance is, is allowed. So I'll explain that when we get to the calculator, but um, it actually means that uh, your worst case scenario, you have 14 thousandths, but you actually potentially have an even larger tolerance zone than that. And that'll be dependent on how big your hole is. So it'll be easier for me to show you that with the calculator. And then we're referencing datums B and C. So datums B here highlighted, C here is the space. Here are our nominals. Uh, 0.5 in y, 2.5 in x. So let's remember these numbers and, and I'm going to switch over to the calculator and we will start using these numbers to, to run through a few scenarios. So we're going to need to measure, um, we're going to need to measure the, the hole size as well as the uh, position. So, oh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's, let's do that with our part here. So I have my my angle block here and I already figured out the hole size using a pin gauge so the largest pin I could get through the hole was a 0.3875 pin I couldn't get a 379 in so we're going to use that to figure out our location and then we're going to figure out if we're in our true position tolerance so um, 
let's uh, let's I like using the pin as I mentioned in some of the other videos uh, I think it's a, a good way to measure hole position especially when you have true position it tends to be a tight tolerance so we will we will use the pin and I'm going to be measuring that 0.5 distance first so let me zero make sure you can see everything let me zero my height gauge so I'm going to zero the dial zero the counter and then zero the test indicator all right everything's zero and then we're going to go up and I'm going to sweep the top find the high point okay and then bring that into zero. I missed it a little bit. Let me try again. All right, on zero, and we'll take on reading. I'll shout it out. It's 0.688. Uh -huh. I'm rounding off a little bit just for sake of uh, moving this along quickly, but we'll call it 0.688. And so 0.688 to the top of the pin means I need to subtract the radius of the pin to get my center point. So 0.688 subtracting 0.3785 divided by two. So I'm 0.49875. So let's call that 0.4988. So I'll write that down. All right. Now we gotta get the other direction off of datum C. So we'll rest our part on datum C. And we're still zeroed on the rock, so I don't need to re-zero again. I can just keep going. And I will sweep the top of the pin. You can see everything just good. Oh, I got pretty close. All right. Zero, let me sweep again, there we go. And let me read off 2.688 and a half. Uh, that makes sense, you know, because of where we are half inch and two and a half inches, so actually pretty similar reading. So uh, 2.6885, let's find the center point of that. I, again, I need to subtract the radius of the pin because I went to the top of it. 2.6885 minus 0.3785 divided by 2. 2.499, and we'll call that 2. So let's remember these numbers, or you know, write down these numbers, and, and let's take a look at our position calculator and figure out if we're within tolerance and, and what that looks like. All right. And let me, let me adjust this so we can go all right so um, here we have an example pretty much preloaded uh, some preloaded data and I'll, I'll explain what we're doing before we enter what we had here so um, you'll see that I've entered our our nominal diameter 0.375 that was on the print we had a minus tolerance of zero on the print and we had a plus tolerance of 5,000. So all I've done is enter that data into these cells. And position tolerance was 14, which I entered. And then our actual diameter was 0.3875. That was the size of the pin that I could get in there. Now, technically it's a little bit bigger because the pin slides in freely. I just don't know how much bigger, but we're gonna call it 0.3875. And then, uh, it already calculated our position error here, but actually we need to skip down here and enter the, the whole position information. So our x nominal 
was 2.5. And then our X tolerance left, or sorry, minus X tolerance and our plus X tolerance are reference only, but that I have them here to draw the box, to help us plot the box. And then our Y nominal is 0.5, and I have the minus Y and the plus Y, as well as the Y actual. So in this case, what we're looking at in this view here, we have our circular tolerance zone of 14 thousandths. We have our reference box, which really doesn't, we don't concern ourselves with now, but we, you know, just for illustration purposes, to show you the difference between the zones. And we have our center point. So our center point was up on this chart, uh, where's our, our X actual 2.504. So moving from center and moving over 2.504 and uh, moving down to 0.498. So our center point here of, this, of the circular zone would be a perfect nominal measurement of 0.5 and 2.5. But for us, we got 2.504, which is a little bit to the right, and 0.9, 0 0.498, a little bit down. So that was what, those are the numbers that were in here. And let us replace a few of our numbers with what we measured. So I got 2.4992. And for the other one, we got 0.4988. So this part, you can see how close it is to center is manufactured very close to nominal and well inside of our circular tolerance. Over here on the right, um, you can see, you know, 14 thousandths is our tolerance zone. I haven't turned on bonus tolerance and our position error is only 0 0.0029. So about three thousandths if you round it off, which is which you also see right here. So this is good, but let's, let's play with the numbers and, and, and work with the calculator. Let's, let's see what, what numbers, how, how big this thing can get. Um, so let's go to, let's, let's go positive. Let's go 2.506 on X. And now the, the dot has left our traditional tolerance zone. So if you didn't have true position on, this part would fail. It's still inside of our, um, in our, it's still inside of our true position zone, our position tolerance. So we're still good. You can still see green here, and we see our calculated error is, is now twelve thousandths and two tenths. Now let's push it outside of our circular tolerance zone by changing the y. We'll make you 0 0.508, and ooh, you see red box here. You're out of your tolerance zone, and you're at 20 thousandths instead of 14 thousandths. So this can be a problem, right? You're out of your tolerance zone. Uh, but as I mentioned a few minutes ago, bonus tolerance from the maximum material condition. There's a little symbol. It looks like a, it looks like a M with a circle around it. And when you see that, that allows you to activate your bonus tolerance. And what bonus tolerance is, how that's calculated is you measure the size of the hole. In this case, 0.3875 with the pin. And you subtract uh, the hole minimum, which is 0.375. So we are 3.5 thousandths bigger than the minimum, which means whatever is going to go in there has 3.5 thousandths more room. So we not only get it in size wise, but that allows us to shift left, right, up, down a little bit more. So if we go to the calculator, we turn on bonus tolerance. And you know what? I even pushed it out a little bit too far. Let's bring it a little bit closer in for the, just for, for argument's sake. With bonus tolerance, now we're in, now we're in. Because our 0.3875 diameter is bigger than 0.375, we get three and a half thousandths of bonus tolerance in the diameter, of course. So our, our, new, our new tolerance is 17 and a half thousandths and went from 14, so we added three and a half to 14. And 
what I'm measuring right now is 17 thousandths. So bonus tolerance is good. Uh, this is how you do it. You basically, you subtract whatever hole size you have. You, know, you subtract the smallest hole you're allowed. So if you make the hole bigger, parts more likely to pass. And let's, uh, let's play with the hole size. Let's say our actual diameter was 0.375 exactly. Ah, actually, let's, uh, let's make it 0.376 so we can see it. Is there, you'll see that the bonus tolerance zone got smaller because we added a smaller number, so we got less bonus tolerance. And if we go to 0.380, which is our largest allowable, and we get a bigger zone. I know the, the image just shrunk due to zooming. It's auto zooming, but we actually got a bigger zone uh, than we had before. And, and we're still in. Now, if we, if we, if we go to, the, let's say, the maximum hole size and our position is still really bad, uh, let's make this 2.508. You'll notice red screen here for your position error and where you have 19 thousandths maximum and you're at 20, that means you're out. So um, I really like using this calculator. The, you know, I developed it to help people, you know, to help visualize what's going on. Uh, it's it's in real time, and I recommend you guys play with it if you're trying to understand true position. Just remember, it's the actual size of the error is twice the length of this hypotenuse here. So let's put it back in print. Um, let's put it back to where we had it. 0.3785. And 2.503. Okay, now we're totally in. And you know, you can turn on bonus tolerance on or off. Um, you might not always have bonus tolerance. It's up to the designer to put that on the print. Um, many applications would benefit from the bonus tolerance, especially tight assembly features. The more tolerance you can give, the better. When it's tight diameter and tight position, if you can give that bonus tolerance, it helps. But but now we're kind of, you know, we're talking about design, and I really want to focus on metrology. But um, as I said, there's more material around GDNT of, you know, most of the material is revolving around design and applications of the symbols, understanding what the symbols mean. But from metrology point, there's there's less. So I think this tool helps a little bit. And I do want to demonstrate a couple more features before we move on, um, take a little side tour. So first of all, the format of what you're seeing on the screen uh, here <laughs> next to me, um, it's going to look different than what I'm going to upload. I have this so that the TV monitor can show it, but it's going to look a little bit better than this. Um, so it'll, be a, it'll look a little different, but um, there'll be some buttons here. I'm going to try to upload a version with macros that will help you clear the data, export a PDF, bring on an example. So I'll demonstrate that. Let's, let's clear the data and boom, it's gone. And then you could put in your own, you know, you could, you could enter your, your data. You need to enter into these five and you need to enter in these eight, basically. Um, that you'll, you'll find all this information on the print and these blue labels will be what you actually measured. Now you can bring on an example if you want to see what it looks like. It moves fairly quick. This is a this is a computer that's quite a bit old, so it doesn't move as fast as uh, some more modern computers. But on my other computer where I to program this, it goes instantly. You can't even see it. So, um, so you can bring on that. And there's also just just off camera, um, there's a maximum material example button as well can't quite get it into frame with everything else but um, so you have a few examples you can bring up with bonus tolerance uh, without bonus tolerance and you know you can clear the data very quickly so um, pretty nice tool uh, I hope you guys like it I'm gonna upload the version with these buttons enabled and a version without these buttons because uh, there may be some cases that Computers will not run these little programs to delete the cells and enter new data. Um, you may see warning messages that say, you know, you need to enable this. You know, macro programs 
can do harmful can do harmful things. Uh, that's what the warning will say. So it's up to you whether you wanna whether you want to download um, the one without macros or one with macros. Um, I'll leave that up to you. Um, but I, th I think it's pretty handy. So um, once again, you know, we're really only talking about the center point here. We're not talking about the surface. Um, I am going to change gears now and, and start talking about the surface. And we'll do a little bit of an, an engineering discussion. Um, on, you know, we're going to start talking about the surface and we're going to talk about why do we do it this way? What's the advantage? You know, you know, why, why, why not just make the square bigger, right? Or, you know, what does this really mean when you give yourself a bonus tolerance where the, where the center point of your hole goes into that zone? What does that really mean? So um, these pictures here are now going to show you the full feature. So I now have the diameter of my hole and I have the diameter of my shaft in red. And then in here, we're going to, in every picture, you're going to see, you know, the, either the square or the circular zone and the, the center point. So in this case, uh, actually the center point of the hole and the center point of the shaft will be represented by a cross. So in this case, everything's lined up. Everything's dead on, uh, concentric and, and, and running out and, uh, perfect. So uh, you're not going to see any error. Let me um, let me activate the pointer real quick. Okay. And in this one, you've pretty much pushed your hole off of position to the maximum. And this is the amount of clearance you have between this hole and this shaft. And throughout these pictures, we're going to assume the shaft is at the largest it can be, which is for assembly purposes, if you want clearance, that's the worst case scenario, right? You want, if you have the smallest shaft, or sorry, if you have the largest shaft and the, and the smallest hole, that's your worst case scenario for, for, for guaranteeing assembly. So that you're designing around that when you're talking about your hole. So if the shaft is at its largest, we're gonna play around with the hole size and the hole position in some of these pictures. But we're gonna assume the hole size is intolerance as well. So let's look at the next set. So if we bring up our, our circular tolerance zone and we look at it that way, in the first image, you know, as I mentioned, you, you could be out of the tolerance if, if you had a square, but you're in tolerance when you use a circle. So that's a great thing. I mentioned before, you get 57% more area. So 57% 50, more tolerance, which, which is a good thing. So if the callout doesn't have position symbol, it fails. If it does and it's tolerance this way, then it passes. Uh, so uh, um, we'll talk about bonus tolerance again and how that affects the surface. So again, um, you know, we're assuming the shaft is at its largest and we're gonna assume the hole is intolerance and, and look how that um, affects um, our measurements. So once again, I want to refresh you guys' memories on, on the print here. Uh, we're going to use pretty much this hole as an example. So 14 thousandths in relation to B and C with maximum material condition. We're going to assume uh, some sort of pin is assembling there. And, you know, we're going to assume the pin is at its maximum size. So let's look at the worst case. You know, we have the largest shaft. We have the smallest hole, which means we have the smallest clearance for them to assemble. If you try to shift the hole a little bit off center, right, you, you very quickly get to your maximum tolerance and you don't have a huge clearance. Um, by the way, you know, none of these center points is in scale to the outside. If I haven't mentioned that before, this is all kind of an exaggeration so I can visualize it for you guys. But you know, you know, from here being perfectly on center, move a little bit and you go all the way to your extreme. Now you're still, you're still passing. So even at the tightest, smallest hole, as long as the position's in tolerance, you're still passing. But if you're gonna go, you know, even more off center, but you still assemble, 
how does that work, right? You can see our center points outside of its zone, but the shaft is still inside the hole. And that's because the hole got bigger. So we have the largest shaft and the largest hole. And when you activate your bonus tolerance, remember that that extra ring appears and everything works again. Now, the only caveat I, I didn't mention this before is, you know, your hole has a has a, a size tolerance. In this case, it was uh, 0.375 plus 5 thousandths, so up to 0.380. Now, if you go out of tolerance in that direction, you're out of spec. Even though everything assembles, it's, it's out of spec. So um, it has to be in tolerance. Um, let's take a couple of... Uh, look at a couple examples where it fails. Um, so first of all, even with bonus tolerance, you can still push it outside of the tolerance zone. So you could push it way off center and, and still be out, and then you get an interference when you go to assemble it. On the other hand, you know, you could, um, if we looked at, say, um, starting off at this picture, and then jumping ahead to this picture, if you go a little bit off center and your hole doesn't get big enough for the bonus tolerance to help you, you could be just outside of your passing because your bonus tolerance didn't get to the bigger size. So one way you could fix this is you could rework this part and make the hole bigger as long as you keep it in the same center place, uh, keep, it, keep the center point in the same place, this, this bonus tolerance will grow and the hole size will grow and the surface interference here will grow and, and it will no longer interfere. So that, that's one way to rework this potential situation. So, I mean, that's how bonus tolerance works. It's, uh, it's really, um, can be tricky, but most of the times it's helpful and if you use that calculator, you can just turn it on and, and input your sizes and your equation and the calculator will figure it out for you. It'll even draw you that nice picture. Um, so one more example, I mentioned this one a little bit earlier, but if, you're, if your hole is, is very large so that your part assembles, well, you'll notice that the the bonus tolerance didn't continue to grow with it because our bonus tolerance has a maximum. Um, from the example, it's plus five thousandths. And if you just keep making your hole bigger and bigger and bigger until it assembles, well, you're out of spec. And you'll see that the center point, not, uh, not only that the size is out of spec, but the center point, no matter how much you grow that hole, still doesn't fall into the bonus tolerance because that doesn't grow, that grows to a maximum so bonus tolerance helps but there are limits um, and then i want to i want to close things with with one last thought i mentioned kind of in the beginning we engineers you know when we are designing the tolerance that we put here typically we're gonna we're gonna design it so that your your square uh, grows your tolerance zone from the square grows and it lands on these corners and really functionally nothing changed from the from the title block tolerance you had right because it doesn't seem fair that when you have round parts assembling if they move in one direction they're out of spec but if they move diagonally they are in spec because squares don't make sense when you're assembling round parts so typically yeah, you should see 14 if you see a, if you had a plus or minus five and they just want to give you that extra space. But occasionally they'll make it smaller. Um, for some reason they might you know, want this to assemble to a tighter fit location wise. So they'll shrink the zone. And uh, in other cases they'll say, well, instead of giving you a larger plus or minus, we'll just give you a larger circular zone because it's still it's round parts so a circular zone makes more sense so as i said you know multiple times kind of forget the square rectangular zone 
I have it up here just to illustrate what's changing, but just forget about it. Just focus on your circle. Um, hopefully you have this situation and um, occasionally you might see the other ones where it gets larger or smaller, but um, most of the time you should hopefully see it where it just helps you. So uh, you can't always count on that though, right? You can't always count on what the engineers are gonna give you. So don't take it for granted. Just look at what your zone you have and, and follow off of that. So um, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video on, on true position, uh, position error. I hope you learned something. I hope you like the tool. Um, you can find it on the website, pragmaticmetrology.com. You can find more of the videos um, on concepts and like calibration, blueprint reading, gauge selection, error, as well as tools like calipers, micrometers, surface plates, equipment, um, angle measurements, hole measurements. So uh, please check out the website. And I usually close videos. I want to thank the Laney Machine Technology College um, in Oakland, California. They uh, let me use this part to demonstrate these videos and they have a really great program there. They offer courses in manual machining, CNC machining, metrology, blueprint reading, CAD design, um, maintenance. They have a lot of great courses there. They have a really good program. You can also earn certificates in machining metrology or inspection. I can't remember the name. I think it's inspection. And they have one other, I think. They have some apprenticeship programs that they're a part of, and, and you can get an associate's degree as well if you stay for two years and, and, and take enough courses. So um, I really recommend you check them out if you're in the Northern California Bay Area. It's Laney College in Oakland, and they have a great program. And I want to thank them, and I want to thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you for the next video. Thank you.